Hello, hello, best friends. Welcome once again, guys, to Academy Coordinates. In this video, we are looking at exponential functions, which are functions of this nature, right? They have got a general um, form, which is y is equal to a multiplied by b to the x plus q in this case. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so these functions a b and q are constant right which affect obviously the functions you know what i'm saying okay fine so let us just plot the function guys and get to appreciate and um, this function a bit more you know let's use the our old you know um table method table method to sketch this beautiful function you know what i'm saying so basically in the table method we just choose a bunch of x values that we would like to include you know so we've got negative three negative two negative one zero um one two three so basically here we just choose enough values to give us um the, the an, an appreciable amount of the graph right so here we've got say y let's say y is equals to i don't know 3 to the power x for example you know what i'm saying this is what this is an example of a simple exponential function you know okay so here if we put um 3 to the negative 3 here what do you guys think we're gonna have we're gonna have 1 divided by 27 right 3 to the 3 is 27 so this is going to be a 1 over 27 then the second one is going to be 1 over 1 sorry 3 to the power and negative 2 so let me just put it 3 to the power negative 2 is equals to 1 divided by 3 to the power 2 all right and 3 to the power 2 is 1 over 9. Do you guys get that? So this is 1 over 9. And then 3 to the power negative 1 is 1 over 3. Right? 1 over 3. And then 3 to the power 0. So 3 to the power 0. This equals to 1. So if you take something and power it to 0, you're going to get 1. Do you guys get that? And something special happens there. Obviously, this means something so you've got x as zero and y as one so i i hope you know what that is you know what i'm saying then three to the one is three three to the two is nine three to the three is 27 right so if we were to plot just to plot this one this function guys to just appreciate it you know what i'm saying okay fine um let's start negative three negative two negative one one two three so at negative three you guys it's one over 27 so it's gonna be really one up here then at negative two it's like one over nine so slightly higher than this one at negative one it's gonna be um uh, what is that one over three so slightly higher than this and then at zero it's equals to one here and then at one it equals to three then at two it equals to nine and then at three it equals to somewhere 27. so okay that is that looks a bit weird but hey so our graph is going to be something like this right you know so this is an exponential function this is our y function and then now guys um what happens see here we've got 3 to the power x y is equal to 3 to the power x how will the graph of y is equal to 1 over 3 x looks like right this can be written as this also 3 to the power minus x right so do you guys see this right here so from 3 to the x to 3 to the power minus x what do you think we do so remember that if from f of x to 
f of minus x, this is a reflection about the y-axis. You guys remember that? So this new graph now will be like this, right? This is the new graph, y, like this. Let me just put it like that, you know? So this is y to the, y is equal to 3 to the x. This is y is equal to 3 to the negative x, right? So it's basically a reflection about the, about the what? About the y-axis. This is the y-axis, you guys. And then now, let's look at this graph. Yeah? y is equal to 3 to the x. If we put a negative here, you know what I'm saying? How do you think this graph will look like? So if you put a negative here, it means that you need to reflect this graph. I think I need another color. Another color. I need to reflect this graph about the x-axis, right? There it is. It's a bit blue there, but hey. Um, remember, guys, that from f of x to minus f of x, this here is a reflection about the x-axis, right? So the graph would look like this. What about this one? This one. So this one would look like something like this. And then here, it's 0 and 1. Do you see that? So this is the y-intercept at 0 and 1. So now that we know that, let's look at this one, at this graph. Okay? This original graph at f of x is equal to 3 to the x. And if I can just ask you guys, what do you think is the domain of this graph? Is there any value of x that can make this guy undefined? No, right? So the domain of this exponential function, x is an element of real numbers. Or another notation, you can just write it like this. You know what I'm saying? So this guy is defined everywhere. However, now, when it comes to the range, we must be a bit careful there because this graph has got an asymptote. This graph has got an asymptote. The asymptote of this guy is here. This one has not been shifted yet, remember? Right vertically. So this, as, this is the asymptote. Y is equal to 0. No, 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 sorry. Yes, Y is equal to 0. This is the asymptote. So the range now, this graph does not exist here. Right? But this graph exists when y is greater than 0. This is the range of this function. We do not include y. Sorry, we do not include 0 here. We do not say greater or equals to 0 because this is at the asymptote. The graph cannot touch the asymptote. Do you guys get that? Right? So, or we can write it like y element from 0 to infinity for this graph, right? For this one, for this one. Let me actually do something dodgy here. For this graph, this is the stuff for it, right? Um, what about for this graph, guys? What about for this graph? This one that was reflected, right? It, it's actually this graph. Um, it looks like this. Okay? It looks like this, something like this. So what about it? So the domain of this graph, the domain of this graph is x, an element of real numbers. So x exists everywhere, you know. So this graph was just y is equal to minus 3 to the power x. But what about the range? Now, the range is different. Even though this graph and this graph have got the same asymptote, but the range is going to be different. Remember, this one is existing here from negative infinity up, 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 just until y is equal to 0. So this one, the range of this graph, y 
is less than zero. You see, so y is less than zero. Remember that this is y is equals to zero. Here it's zero. So y is less than zero. But for this one, because y is greater than zero, we do not include it here, right? So that is um, the whole essence of these graphs and, and everything like that, you know. So I just want us to appreciate that so that we can be able to look at it in great detail. So now what happens, guys? Let's look. This function is f of x is equals to a times b to the x plus q. So we have got this function, a function of this nature, right? So um, what is q? I mean, what does this q guy, what is it doing here? You know what I'm saying? Um, why, why is it here? I mean, like, what? how dare it? You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So Q shifts, shifts the function vertically, right? So if Q is greater than zero, the function is going to be shifting, it's going to be shifted upwards, Q units, right? Then if Q is less than zero, the function is going to be shifted downwards, Q units. Do you guys see that? So, for example, from this graph, so, um, um, so the function is shifted Q units downwards. You know what I'm saying? So, from this function here, um, so, okay, imagine this is um, y is equals to minus 3 to the x, right? What about y is equals to minus 3 to the x minus 1 now? So it means that there is a horizontal asymptote at minus 1 where the graph is going to be it's shifted, remember, 1 unit downwards. But it actually moves like that. You know what I'm saying? So now, Q shifts the function vertically. But what if Q was then here? So it means that it's going to be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just going to go up there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, since this is 0, and then this is a negative 1 right here, what about this? Um, I mean, negative 1 will obviously be here. Okay, it's not drawn to scale. But this graph is supposed to cut here, you know what I'm saying, this original one. So this one is going to go down by one unit, so here it's going to be negative 2. Do you guys see that? So Q shifts the function vertically, do you know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to take note of that. And then um, the domain and the range, I spoke about it briefly. Um, let me just look at it again. The domain and the range right the domain and the range so the domain x is an element of real numbers so this function exists everywhere x or you can just write negative infinity to infinity right this is the domain but now guys what about the range you know so the range is dependent on this guy it's dependent on the asymptote on the horizontal asymptote of the graph right so if this is your graph, or this is your graph, right? So, let's say this is f of x, ma'am. So, f of x greater than 0, because of this is, this line is 0. But now, what happens? f of x, this is, this will be your range here. What happens, guys, when you've got something like this? Um, let's say... This guy was shifted one unit upwards, right? This is one. Then there are your graphs right there. There are your exponential functions. So here, obviously, so this is another f of x. So your range is going to be f of x. But f of x is greater than one, right? So that is what we mean by this. But what happens if you've got stuff like this now? And let's say this guy was down as negative 2, for example. Right? 
So I just want you guys to see what I meant when I say it's going to depend on the asymptote mu. Uh, so here, let's say this was f of x, but let's just use y. I mean, hey, y. So y here is going to be less than what? Negative 2. You see, less than negative 2, that is the range of this particular graph. Okay, guys, and also as I've said to you guys, this graph, remember hyperbolic functions have got um, two asymptotes, but this one has got one asymptote. It only has the horizontal asymptote. So if you've got a function like this, you know what I'm saying? For example, just know that your horizontal asymptote is y is equals to q. That's it, guys. You know what I'm saying? So basically, on the next video, I'm going to do a thorough example where you guys are going to appreciate these, um, these uh, techniques in more detail. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned for that. It's going to be late, guys. You know what I'm saying? So just stay tuned for that and see you on the next video. Do enjoy the rest of your day.